Hello travelers, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a little bit different. I have seen a lot of videos around YouTube right now that are like, I wish I knew this before I started playing Palea or beginner tips and tricks, but there's so many little things I noticed aren't included in these videos. So I want to tell you about them. The first thing I wanna mention, which is honestly what makes Palea so great to me, is that your levels don't affect gameplay. Other than allowing you to access higher tools and recipes, which help you do things faster and for longer, it doesn't actually change the gameplay itself and allows everyone in Palea to be equal. This includes your base character level that you see on your character screen and individual levels for the skills. So don't worry if you are level five or level 105. The next thing is about fishing. Fishing without bait allows you to catch trash. In Palea, it's known as junk, including wheels, gross wet boots, and other sort of items. But if you fish with worms and glow worms, you get a better chance of fishing up a makeshift chest, which are those seaweed covered gunky chests that you pull out of the water and inside are really cool decor items that can only be caught in fishing. If you don't yet have worms or glowworms, you can buy worms from Zeki's General Store and you can get glowworms from Einar, but you'll want to up your fishing skill because that's how you get the farms for them. On the topic of treasure chests, the ones you find around the world in Kelama and Bahari Bay can be used as decor and they don't respawn later in the game. So any chest you find on the ground and you pick it up and get a cool item by opening it, those are only a one-time reward. But if you find them all, you get a special extra reward. The next thing of note is that gardens don't grow when you're offline. So if you close the game or log out, your garden will cease to grow. You need to water it every day in game prior to 6 a.m. when they complete their next growth stage. But your garden will continue to grow as long as you're logged in. So if you're logged in and you're running around Bahari and you've put water retaining fertilizer on them, they should be good for a while. Just make sure that if you want your garden to grow while well, you're AFK, you stay logged in. And the game will log you out after 30 minutes of inactivity. So make sure to run back to your computer and jump once in a while. Speaking of your home plot, resources on your plot, like trees and rocks, don't respawn. So if you want to use them for decor later in the game, like you want those bushes, leave them be. You can't replant them. You can't make them come back. There are tons of other resources out in the world. You can, however, replant each of the types of trees, but they all plant the same size and they're rather small. So I recommend leaving your trees and rocks on your plot until you know for sure how you want to decorate. And on the topic of housing plots, did you know that you have more than one? If you go to the H menu or you press down on your left stick on the switch, this menu is primarily used for placing down new housing features like extra rooms, gazebos, doorways, and things like that. If you click the name of the plot at the top, you'll get a drop down menu and you'll see that you have two other plots unlocked. Each plot is completely separate from the other one other than the trees, the rocks, and the bushes that are the original resources when you log into the game. Any tree you plant acts as a decor item, so that's only on the original plot you planted that tree on. I hope that makes sense. You can buy additional housing plots as well, which is important to note because that's how you get the windmill and the gazebo. You have to have a total of six housing plots available to you to unlock the gazebo. You can upgrade all of this type of thing by going to City Hall or in the H menu itself, when you drop down the extra plots, there's a little menu icon on purchasing the next one. Now, the next thing I'm gonna mention kind of ties into the housing plots. I wanna talk about storage upgrades because every time I'm streaming and mention that I wanna upgrade my storage or I'm glad that I did it, somebody in chat says, you can upgrade your storage. And yes, you can. You can upgrade your character's inventory as well as your plot storage. Inventory storage is upgraded by purchasing the backpack expansion at Zeki's General Store. It's just to the left of the main desk. Storage upgrades are recipes purchased at Tish's physical furniture store through the cash register at the back. You can then pick up your existing chests and go to the crafting bench to upgrade them like you would your tools. Why this ties into the plots 
is because you can only have a total of eight chests per lot, but it doesn't matter if you have more than eight for the actual storage capacity. What I mean by that is you can make as many chests as you want, but only eight of them are actually functional to hold items. So you don't have to make more than eight chests and waste resources. This doesn't include lock boxes though. Those don't go towards the eight total chests. They have their own count. And if you want that recipe, it's also in Tish's physical furniture store at that back cash register. These next things might be talked about in more videos than not, but I think they're still important. One is that when you're in Bahari Bay and Kilima too, it's important to note that resources don't just magically appear. But if you're looking for Palium, for example, and you're not breaking rocks or iron nodes to get rid of them, Palium has nowhere to spawn. So if you're running around the map and saying, there's no Palium, it's probably because nobody is breaking the existing stones and iron nodes. Somebody has to be doing that to allow Palium to spawn in. It works the same with flow trees. You have to break down existing trees to allow flow trees the opportunity to spawn in. On the topic of having to remove certain items so that other ones can spawn in, like trees and different rock nodes, this is also applicable to rare forageables in certain situations, specifically the Dari Clove and the Heart Drop Lily. For those two items to spawn into the world, their spawn locations have to be empty. So you have to make sure that you pick any briar daisies, mushrooms, sweet leaves that you see to allow the possibility of those forageables to spawn in. Another minor thing of note that I don't see people mention very often is inventory full and what overflowing inventory means. When your inventory becomes full and for some reason it becomes overflowed, like let's say you pick up a stone because you already had stone in your inventory, but you also got a star stone, that would go into overflow. If your overflow also overflows, it's sent to your inventory at home, which funny enough can also overflow and you won't be able to put anything more in your inventory until you unpack it. Why I'm mentioning this is because it's important to realize you can't ever lose an item in the game unless it's a glitch. So there should be no reason that an item you've picked up and the game has let you pick up will ever disappear. It's going to be located somewhere either in your overflow of your character inventory or in the overflow of your home inventory. Another really frequently asked question when players start up the game for the first time is while they're on their quest to get their glider, they ask, how do I get leather? And how do I get fabric, silk? You have to have the fabric maker in the game. It looks like a loom. You get this recipe from Tish via her skill store. So just go talk to Tish, open her guild store, and you'll be able to see the recipe for the fabric maker. Once you have that, you can use Cernuk hides to make leather, you can use cotton from the garden to make fabric, and you can use silk thread that you get from rare and epic bugs to create silk. You can also just buy the materials to start with to get your glider faster, but you will eventually need these recipes and materials for other things in the game. The other thing I wanna mention is the Phoenix Shrine. I've included this in a couple of my videos, but people still don't know it exists, and it took me forever to realize it was a thing when I was playing. The Phoenix Shrine is located where you originally spawned into the game, the very first place you were. That's where you can spend your renown and gain extra experience when using focus. Most of you are probably familiar with the Dragon Shrine and how it lets you have more focus overall at any given time but your skills will skyrocket in levels if you utilize the Phoenix Shrine. Those are all the tips and tricks I have for you at this time, but of course, as I think of more, I will make more videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe if you feel like it. Most of all, I hope you have a very magical day.